my name is Jackson, AKA the big unit. Some of you know me as the guitar repair guy. Some of you know me as the lead singer, guitarist, and songwriter for the heavy metal band Shatterbone. Some of you know me as an electrical educator. Some of you know me as the guy with the crazy guitar collection. Some of you know me as a diehard Raiders fan. For years I have worked on, collected, played, and spent all my free time around guitars. But now I am going to do something I have never attempted before. I'm going to build a guitar. Alright, hello everybody. Uh, big unit here. A uh, little bit uh, off the tracks here. Um, I'm, I'm still working on my guitar, uh, although there hasn't been a lot accomplished in recent days. We had the holiday weekend, our air conditioner died in the middle of a heat wave, so that was horrible. And it's still not fixed, so even though the heat wave broke a little bit, we're still without air conditioning. But I uh, had mentioned the other day on uh, the Crimson live stream that I was thinking about staining several samples of ash with the crimson stains that I owned to give people an idea of, of what they think of the how they look on ash and then I did a little bit of playing around and I'll show you those too uh, I guess my thought being is a lot of times when you look on you know any manufacturers website whether it be crimson or whether it be Sam Ash or whoever, when they show stains, they show stains on completely white maple in most cases. And, I mean, let's be honest, that's where a lot of us like to use stains is on white maple because it being as bright as it is, it really takes to the stain color and looks nice and things like that. But Ash gets a a really neat effect to it too. A lot of times the lines that we have through ash will absorb more of the stain than the harder striations will. So you almost get a striped effect. Uh, and, and so I wanted to try and use the stains that I had, the crimson stains that I have, and just give everybody an idea of what they look like on ash wood. So I have several samples here. Um, most of the ash, you know, started out to be a, a fairly light color. I mean, it's obviously not nearly as bright as like a white maple, but it's, it's not particularly dark striations or anything like that in the ash wood. Uh, so the first sample I have here is a sky blue, and I mean, maybe it would work here if I grab a, a sample square that has no color to it so you can kind of compare. Alright, so the first color I have here is the sky blue stunning pastel stain. Um, it, it is very light. It, it doesn't have a, a real intense color to it. Uh, but if you're looking to do something like a, a blue burst or something like that, that effect, this would be a really good center stain. You know, something that starts out very light in the center and bursts out to a very dark blue on the edges. This would be a good one to work with for that. Um, then I have the Vibrant Stunning Stain in lime green. I, I don't know, I think that's a really awesome color. I dig it. Um, it doesn't take a lot to get that color either. I mean, I didn't have to sit there and, and rub on multiple layers. Most of these are single coat is all it took to get the color that you're seeing right now. 
Uh, the next one is aquamarine. Mrs. Unit's favorite color. Okay, uh, it's 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 a very nice aqua blue, really pretty. It's also a vibrant, stunning stain, aquamarine. Then the thalo blue, uh, very close to aquamarine, but you know if you compare aquamarine to thalo blue, the thalo blue is a little more blue, while the aquamarine is just slightly more green than that. Uh, but they are very similar, and this is the stunning spirit stain, thalo blue. I like that one a lot. Then there is the Stunning Spirit Stain Denim Blue. Very aptly named. I mean, it, it really does have that denim blue color to it. Then the, the Stunning Spirit Stain in Royal Blue. It's a really deep, rich blue, almost purple at, at times. There's on that ash wood. There's a shadow. You can't hardly really see it. Sorry. There you go. Is that better? Yep. Okay. So there's that royal blue is is really really nice. Um, but like I said, you know, depending on the wood, you could even get some like purple variations from it. All these ones I'm showing you here first are are just a a single coat of that particular stain. No undercoat. Nothing like that. Sanded the blocks to 240, and then applied a single coat of stain. Um, Stunning Spirit stains crimson red. And Stunning Spirit stains cherry red. Um, honestly, the cherry red is not quite as vibrant as the crimson red. The cherry red is almost like a salmon pink on ash. I mean, comparing the two, where this is the crimson red and this is the cherry red, the, the crimson is, is redder, is that a word? More red than the salmon, or, or excuse me, cherry red. Then the green. Now, I don't know what happened, because when I was watching, um, I, I want to say like two years ago, three years ago, something like that, Crimson uh, had a couple of the employees going through and, and practicing with all the stains. And when they did the green, it almost looked more of an aqua color. But that stunning spirit stain in green, that green is really emerald green. Okay, I mean, it really pops. So I'm not, I'm not sure if it was just my camera, or I mean my television, or their camera, or what the deal was, but that is a whole lot more green than I remember seeing it. I really like that green, that's sharp. Um, then there's yellow. Okay, uh, a little bit more vibrant than amber, but still, uh, you know, a, a nice color if you're if you're going for some of the um, I don't want to say antique. What's the word? Um, aged looking wood. Okay, you get kind of that that aged butterscotch almost look. Then black. Again, stunning spirit stains and the black. It really seeps into the striations. Like I said, this was only one coat, so I didn't, I didn't uh, keep going and keep going and keep going to try and get it like super dark. Additional coats would make it darker than that, of course. But in the case of ash, that black is a really nice undercoat. So if you do this in black, and the black soaks into the more porous striations through there, and then you sand back and do another color, it gives it a really nifty effect. I've got a couple of practice pieces I did that with. I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, the pink. 
I I love the pink. It's it just pops. It looks great. I mean, even on Ash, it's got. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, if I can get it to do it, but just looking at it here, I can see it's almost got a, the same effect that like a quilted maple has or a flame maple has, where it's actually got the 3D effect to it. Really neat, I dig it. Um, but the, I've got a plan for that coming up in a future build, so I'm probably not gonna use that this time. Uh, then the orange, Stunning Spirit Stains Orange, Very orange, okay? I mean, I know a lot of times you see orange and it ends up getting way too red or way too yellow and it doesn't really look orange. This, this is this is about as pumpkin Halloween orange as it can get with a stain. It, it's really a good orange. Brown. Again, brown would probably work better as an undercoat, sanding it back and then going back at it with another color because the wood grain kind of dies in the brown, not D-Y-E, D-I-E, you lose the wood grain. So um, brown's nice for a backing coat, but I don't know if I'd do a whole guitar in just brown unless I wasn't really after the wood grain. And then you have amber. Um, and amber, I think, is another really nice color it's uh, it's a little more to the brown side of things than yellow is, but it's significantly lighter than brown. So it's it's got a nice color to it. And then I, I played around a little bit with the colors. Um, so I did a denim blue over black. So you get like the black lines, sanded it back, and then did the denim blue over top of it. Black under pink. It's kind of got a cool effect to it. Royal blue under pink. If you're after a purple guitar, that's a really nice way to go about it. I mean, you get that. Looking really close at it, you see the blue lines and you see the pink lines, but if you step back from it a little bit, it gets purple really fast. And this is fallow blue underneath with pink over top. So this, if you're looking for blue, if you're looking for blue striations through pink that's probably a better way to go the royal blue is so dark it really kind of turns it purple where the fallow blue keeps its blue separate from the pink um lime green and black i kind of like that um i really was leaning that way for my guitar build but i don't think i'm going to do that this time it looks cool, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time. This was amber under yellow. And that's a little bit different. You know, it, it definitely gets a few shades darker than yellow, but it is also not really amber. It's kind of in between the two. I think it helps bring the wood grain out more than if you just do yellow. Uh, this one was denim blue underneath, sanded back, and then sky blue over top of it. I, I don't think I did a really great job on sanding that piece. Um, this is when I first began with practicing, and you can see I didn't really sand it back in a couple spots as good as I should have. But that that does make that sky blue stand out a little bit more than just sky blue all by itself.
Then I've got black under crimson red. I'm going to get that Carrie King finish or whatever, right? That, that's kind of got that going on. This one is black under aqua. So that, that's kind of cool. I mean, just looking at the aquamarine versus the black under aquamarine, it, it brings out the lines a little more, but it does kind of take down how vibrant the aquamarine is a little bit. So if that's just a little bit too hair metal glam 80s aqua for you, that's a little bit less intense. And then I have black under orange. My high school football colors were black and orange, so I saw that and I instantly started thinking, oh, hey, I could do that, and that's got the whole school pride thing going. But, um, yeah, not this build. What I ended up going with, and now I've said to you guys in, I think it was my first video or something, that maybe I'd take votes on colors that everybody likes and stuff like that. I don't know. I started thinking, hey, this is my first build. I want to make it something I'm going to be happy with. So I came up with what I think I want to use, and that was this sample piece. And this is royal blue sanded back with a denim over top of it. And I really like the way that looks. And now I'm going to be using chrome hardware. Got it. I ended up going with a shallow bridge. I know I was saying uh, possibly going with a hip shot, but this this shallow bridge does not require me to have barrels through the body. I, I feed strings in the end, and it's got a roller saddle. I kind of like that, but. Seeing that blue with that chrome, I just like the way that looks. That looks sharp. So I think that's what I'm going to end up going with for my, my finish on my build. Um, but yeah, you know, the big thing here, I, I talk about Crimson a lot, Crimson guitars, and what an inspiration Ben Crow has been for me to get into building and stuff like that. And I mean, Ben is really the one that started this ball rolling, but I, I gotta credit a lot of guys who've really inspired me to this point. Sweet Tea Guitars, Bonehead Guitars, Spike's Frugal Fixer, um, all these guys that I talk to online and stuff like that have, and watch their videos and they've just inspired me to want to do more. and. So I'm kind of trying to pay it back here a little bit, you know. I feel that if somebody gives you something, even if it's knowledge or desire, that the best thing you can do is give back to them in some way. So if nothing else, I'm trying to promote Crimson here a little bit, saying, hey, their stains are incredible. They look awesome. They look awesome on ash. They look awesome on maple. It doesn't take much to get any of these. All I've done with any of these is practice. And if you look at the bottles, I haven't, I haven't used a teaspoon out of any of these bottles yet to get everything I've done. And, and I played around a lot. These are just the scraps that I kept to show you. Okay, so you know, I think, I think these stains are great. You literally have. Uh, a single coat on each one of these pieces. I, I didn't do multiple coats. Of course, doing multiple coats gives you darker colors and things like that. Um, th this is literally just the basic tip of the iceberg of what these are all capable of. And this is not their entire range of stains or anything like that. This is the spirit stains. Okay, so these are not water-based. These are oil-based. Um, don't don't breathe too hard if you're doing it in not well ventilated area and other, otherwise you start to see little fireflies floating around in the air and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you know, but they work fantastic. I really like them. And 
I, I intend to use them on the body of my guitar for sure. Uh, I might even do something like, you know, yellowing the neck a little bit or something like that just to give it that effect also. We'll, we'll uh, give that a whirl when we get to that point. So, but yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's it for all I had for this episode. I, I wasn't going to spend an incredible amount of time on this, but you know, I, I said to Ben that I was thinking about doing this and I know a lot of people out there like myself get curious about these things and you, you see the, like I said, the, the general application that most people do is a white piece of flamed maple scrap that they practice on or something like that, but I mean, what do you get when you do it on ash and things like that? So that's, that's really what I was going for here. It gives me a chance to practice to, you know, eventually decide on the color that I am going to do for my build but then it also gives everybody else a chance to see what it looks like so maybe they can make those decisions you know for themselves and somebody who's a you know more into that green or something like that this gives them an idea of what they're going to get if they buy that product from crimson so there will be a link on this video description to get you to crimson guitars if you want to purchase any of these products or any of their other wonderful products. They've got a lot of great stuff. Um, and uh, I guess until next time, thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe. See you next time.